Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we are going to be here in advanced mode and we're going to be building a boat. Uh, hopefully we're going to be using the knowledge that we have picked up from the last couple of videos. Uh, the objective of this video is pretty much just to be going through the process of building a boat, constructing it, um, going through all the usual things that we usually go through, whether it be the piping, the blocks, the components, so on and so forth. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of the video, you should have the knowledge to then go ahead and build your own boat in the game. Um, and then hopefully push it up and bring it to the workshop sometime, share it with everyone in the community. So first off, we're going to go ahead straight in and start building the boat. Um, first thing first is I'm going to, as always, enable the symmetry plant uh, on the X-plane. As you can see here, I have gone ahead and just built the base or the shell of the boat itself. Uh, nothing special, nothing fancy. It's just going to be a plain old boat. Um, I've gone ahead and used our blocks, our inverse pyramids for the front of the boat, uh, just gradually stepping it back by one block on each line. Gone ahead and sloped it up by two of the slope blocks. And then at the back, I've just done a small slope, one curve, and then a straight back. Um, pretty much what we're going to go ahead and start with is we're going to go start with the engine itself. Uh, for this build, I'm going to be using two aircraft engines that I've decided to use. Uh, and we're going to be placing that just towards the rear of the boat where I'm highlighting it now. We're going to go ahead and get that all piped up. Uh, once we've done that, we'll go ahead and add our rudders to the back. Uh, we'll build up the deck a little bit, make a little housing for the engines, uh, and then close the front of the boat itself, and then build a little cabin with some chairs and seating and so on and so forth for ourselves and also for some passengers. Great. So we'll go ahead, first of all, and we'll place down our aircraft engines. As I said just now, uh, we're going to use two aircraft engines for this build. Uh, so let's go ahead and place that down. As always, um, and like the last video where I use a truck, I like to place the engines going the other way around. So that we have our intake for the coolant and so on and so forth in the front. And then we have our drive shaft or engine output towards the rear of the boat or the engine itself. So first off, let's go ahead and place that down. Um, I am going to just raise this up quickly just because I prefer how it looks. Um, that's all about the game is there's going to be constant changing, editing, deleting, replacing blocks until you get it to more or less how you like it. At the end of the day, um, I like it as it is current now. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and place these blocks down. Not too far back uh, and not too far forward either, but I think that's more or less where I want it to be. So first off, uh, as always, we need to, or I'm going to start with um, placing the pipes down for the air intake. Uh, as the last video, I will be using colored blocks or colored pipes um, just to show you guys the difference between them uh, so you can clearly relate which blocks are where in my creation. So first off, we need to do our air, as I said earlier. First, we're just going to place the straight, block, uh, straight pipe down, and then we're just going to add our two fluid ports onto that. Actually, hold on. I have a different idea. What I'm going to do is just make this a little more jazzy, as you could say. Uh, I'm going to make the air intakes just over here above um, above the deck and in front of the um, the actual window for the um, drivers, the little shield. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start running that pipe towards that general direction. Um, and then we'll see how that comes out at the end. We can always move back if need be. Um, and as I said just now, it's all about playing around and just finding what you guys like to like to do. Um, I think that would be quite cool to have the little intakes in the front of the boat, uh, obviously on top so it doesn't drag any water in. So let's just go ahead and bring this all the way down. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll leave it for there about for right now. Um, let's go ahead and do our propulsion. Uh, propulsion is just over here. Uh, I am going to use a clutch and gearbox, uh, as I've talked about in a couple of previous videos, just so that we can obviously have the motor running when um, we don't have any propulsion going to the actual propellers. Uh, and then also we can change gear, either go forward, forward or backwards uh, using a boat. Fantastic. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to place one... Actually, no, I'm not going to place any blocks down. I'm just going to go ahead straight away and put our clutch down. Orange, as always, just to uh, point out that we're using the propulsion here. So go ahead and bring that down. So we have the clutch. We're going to go and bring it down again. Um, we'll go ahead and try and figure out how we're going to fit this in here. Uh, so let's do this. Let's 
angle it towards that way. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll then drop a gearbox down. Fantastic. Then obviously it's going to come from there into the clutch down into the gearbox itself. Uh, and then what we can do is bring it into one. So we have one central drive shaft. And then what we'll do again is we'll then go and split it, bring it across. And then going out the rear of the boat itself. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that block over there. So you can see here, I don't like that height. Um, I don't think the propeller should be that high. I more or less probably want the propellers to go, um, yeah, about there. So what we'll do is we'll line that up then. So you can see here, we're going to go down through there and then connect to our propeller. So we'll go ahead, angle that pipe, go down into here, turn this around. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and directly connect our propeller to that. So for this video, I'm just going to use some small propellers. Uh, we'll start with two as it is right now, and we'll see how we get on, uh, whether we need to go ahead and add more or not. Uh, that will obviously depend. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'll do a little bit of aesthetic work and see how it comes out and see if we need to change anything. Fantastic. So that takes care of the propulsion. Uh, next off we need to do is the coolant for the engine. So as I said in the last video, uh, I like to use blue for the coolant to come into the engine so it's nice and cool. So as you can see here, just remember because we're using the symmetry plane, it might not be the same. However, it is both the ones on the outside are going to be coming in and both the ones on the out on the inside are going to be coming out. So that's perfect. So for this, instead of using radiators or um, the other way, which is using heat sinks, I'm actually going to use a pump uh, and that pump is going to take cold water from the sea, use that as coolant, pump out the hot and then draw in cold water again. Um, quite a different uh, way of doing it in comparison to how we've done it in a couple of other things, uh, but it does work and it keeps it quite nice and cold. Uh, that might change, <laughs> who knows, but we'll soon find out, I guess. So we'll go ahead and connect all these pipes up. Fantastic. So this is going to be our cold. And then we'll stick a, um, a little pump here. Let's go ahead and do that now. For the purpose of the video, I'll use a large food pump because we want it to do quite nice and fast. What I'm going to do is place this block down. Uh, the pumps do have a specific in and out, so you just need to be careful. So I'm going to place it down here and then just take another pipe and just check so you can see that's out. So we don't want that to be out. We actually want that to be the in because it's going to draw water in suck it and then push it into the engine. So we're going to turn that round. Fantastic. So you can see now, if we go ahead and hop and make our block over here, you can see that's fluid in, which is perfect because that's what we want. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, delete two blocks. So those blocks are going to be for our ports to bring, either bring water in or bring water out. These fluid ports, you can either push things through or pull things through. Uh, they work either way. You don't have to use different ports for this. Uh, so let's go back to our blue. All we'll do is we'll just do take the symmetry off. One pipe up, one pipe across. So that's all wired up and piped up for the coolant in. Now what we'll go ahead and do is do our coolant out of the engine. So this is going to be the hot coolant. I'm going to head and turn symmetry back on. Uh, so it places it back on both sides. We'll turn that across and we'll do exactly the same thing. Um, and bring the two pipes together. And then what we'll do is we'll just move it a little bit forward. So that it comes into the next one. Great. Go down a bit. Fantastic. And then we'll go ahead and put another pump down. Just remember that this pipe needs to be the opposite way now because obviously it's pulling from the engine and then pushing out the next fluid port that we're going to be putting that we're going to be connecting it to now. So great. Turn symmetry off again. We're accidentally placing a block there. Uh, go ahead and turn symmetry off. We're going to turn around and then get this all nicely connected to each other. Fantastic. 
Okay, so we've got that all connected. That's the piping for the coolant done. As you can see here, this pump is going to draw in cold water from the sea, pump it through, split it, and then send it to the two engines. This pipe is going to take the hot water out, bring it through, push it through this pump, and then push it out the bottom of the boat. So that's all taken care of now. Um, all nice and cool. Now, what we need to do is our exhaust. Uh, we obviously have two per an engine, so this is mean we're going to have four exhausts. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine each engine, and so we have only two outputs going out the back of the boat itself. Uh, and these outputs are going to be just over here. Uh, let's let's put them. Let's put one on either side over here, uh, like that. So let's go ahead and. Actually, no. As I said earlier, it takes a lot of changing and working to figure out exactly where you want things to be placed in this game. Um, I think I probably am going to change that and put it over here. So we'll have one on either side. Just remember to enable symmetry again. So one on either side, and that's where we're going to have our two little exhaust coming out of the engine itself. I'm going ahead and just build this up a bit. Great. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stick on our enclosed pipe, just a straight pipe here, just enclosed. So you can see here in the back, that's going to be nice and enclosed. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a exhaust onto that. As I did in the last video, I'm going to do all the exhaust components in a dark gray. Once again, just for the reference, so you can see everything I'm doing, uh, so we don't get lost anywhere along the way. So go ahead, and we'll go ahead and connect this up now. Uh, simple TP, simple corner piece, connect it there. We're then going to take a angled pipe onto the end of that, bring it up by one, turn it around, and then connect it straight to our exhausts. And there we go. Fantastic. So that takes care of our exhaust. Our exhaust now coming from the engine, uh, from both ports of the oh, actually engine itself, and then shooting back to the back rear of the boat itself. Quite nice, easy, and simple. Uh, and then lastly, what we need to do is we need to take care of our fuel. Uh, what I'm going to do is, same as I did for the truck video, I'm just going to use red, uh, dark red for fuel, and I'm going to use two large fluid tanks. Uh, these fluid tanks, doesn't really matter where you place them. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and place them just towards the rear of the boat, just over here I'm happy with. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and connect those to each engine. Um, so each engine has its own supply of fuel. Fantastic. So we'll go ahead and turn that and then bring it up. Bring it across. Take this one down. Great, cross, angle it towards that, and there we go. And then we have our fuel taken care of. Uh, as always, it does spawn default with diesel. Just make sure it is on diesel before you proceed. Aircraft engines currently take diesel. Uh, fantastic. Gearboxes, all this will get hooked up and we'll get it all wired up later on. Uh, lastly, what we will do is we'll just go ahead and place uh, two Two million batteries, it's probably a little bit of overkill for the engine. It uh, doesn't really need that much, however, why not? Uh, we'll go ahead and place that. Or also balance the boat out a bit. As you can see here, our center of gravity is just over here. Uh, so if I was to put more weight here, it would move towards there. If I put more in the front, it would move towards there. It's a good way to see if your boat is nicely balanced or not, uh, or any creation that you're actually building. Uh, it's a good way to see if that's working or not. Great, so next off, what we're going to do is we're going to start um, creating our top deck. Um, we'll go ahead and do that in the same white as we have been doing already. Uh, so this little back piece over here we're talking about, um, I am going to use this as a little, let's say, as a little um, deck at the back of the boat, just for some people to stand on. So we'll go ahead and... Just get this built up. Great. So we have that little deck at the back of the boat now. Looks quite nice. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll just put a small little stair down or stairs uh, down just to get into the boat itself. Go ahead and delete that. Put a little stair block down there. Great. And then just don't forget to 
tighten that all up because that will be considered a leak if you do not tighten that all up, uh, which means it will then leak and sink, which we don't want. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just build this across here. Fantastic. Go join that up together. We're going to have our engine compartments just going along here. So what we'll do is we'll just bring this up here. Fantastic. Bring this along a little bit more. Now, as you can see here, this, these pipes have actually gotten in the way. So as I said earlier, it takes a lot of deleting and replacing blocks to find exactly where you want it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and hold control down, just uh, select that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And then what I'm going to do is just move the fuel tank port to where it is there. And then I'm going to delete all these pipes here. And I'm just going to angle it in a different direction so that it doesn't interfere with how I'm building the boat itself. Now, obviously you could go ahead and place place these fuel tanks wherever you want. Uh, I'm just putting them here for this video. Uh, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the purpose is just to show you how, how I would do it and how you can replicate it in your own um, creation at the end of the day. Uh, so let's go ahead and see where that needs to be before it clears that. Okay, so it needs to be there before it's clear. That's perfect. What we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and build that up. Connect that to that, build it across there, and then we'll go ahead and just close that off. So then that's going to be the rear of the boat. Uh, we'll make it look a little bit more prettier than how it currently looks now. And by doing that, we'll just go ahead and add some corner blocks. And we'll do the same for the rear. Where what we'll do is we'll take that, delete those, use once again the slope blocks to go up. Slope blocks along here. Get rid of that. Put one of these blocks down. Now that might change as we go on, but I think that looks quite half decent at the moment. Uh, we'll do painting towards the end. Let's go ahead and just build our main deck where our crew are going to be seated. Uh, I think that's more than fine for the work we're doing. Uh, then we're going to just go ahead, build it up a couple blocks just over here. Think of this as our controls or I don't know, dashboard, as you would say. Mm, I don't know the exact terminology in, uh, in boat language. Uh, excuse myself. Um, so go ahead and just start building this top deck over here. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Uh, we will need to just add a couple more blocks here just so we can place down our wedge blocks. Fantastic. Or well, inverse pyramid blocks, should I say rather. So you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and just start angling this all up. It takes a little bit of trial effort just to find out exactly where these blocks go and how it all fits and how it will look nice at the end of the day. Um, fantastic. So, what we'll do is we'll start adding our slope blocks and then you can see it's starting to show us where we need to actually put our inverse pyramids which is going to be just over here fantastic and then let's put our last wedge block or slope block i like to call it just here in the front and now we can go ahead and actually just close this this whole deck up now uh, we will later on be doing our port for the air, as I mentioned earlier. I was going to put the air in the front of the boat. Ooh, now you can see I've placed that down. However, when I've placed it, it's built it down, which I don't want because that's going to add extra weight. So I'm just going to again delete that, bring it across, and then build it to enclose. So then that's completely enclosed now. We don't have to do any more. That's a complete watertight hell nothing going to be coming through there and then we still have plenty of space to go ahead and edit in there a little bit perfect so let's go ahead and now we're going to do our little dashboard here we're going to put some windows down and then build from there on forth so what we'll use for this video that's a very good question i'm leaning towards maybe using these somehow I don't know how that's going to look. So what I'm thinking is we'll go ahead and use our large angled block windows to start off with maybe. 
see how that looks. Do a couple of those. Do one in the middle. Those coming there. And then let's see if we can use a corner block and just see how that looks. Oh, it doesn't look bad. It's just it's not more or less what I want. So I could always straighten that out a bit. Uh, and let's see. Okay, I have an idea. What we'll do. So we'll just angle this out. And then what we'll do is we'll run this straight back to about there. And then we'll do it like that. That doesn't look too half bad. Um, obviously, you can spend more time. This is just, as I said, a quick quick tutorial just show you how I would probably do it. Um, so let's go ahead and just build our cabin up here a little bit. What we'll do is two pilot seats on either side. Let's go ahead and select our pilot seats. When placing these downs, if you see that if I angle it up according to that block, which I'm holding it against, it actually places it one down. So what you actually have to do is just build another block up, take your seat, put it down. If I can get the rotation right. And then you go ahead and go and just delete those blocks. Makes it a little bit easier for placing the blocks down. And we can go ahead and just close that up again. You can see now we've got our two seats in there. That's perfect. Uh, what we'll do is we'll add a couple more seats for our passengers. So let's go take passenger seats. Block those down. I want my passenger seats. Let's see. Yeah, why not? We'll put it like that for now. I might change that, uh, but I think that looks half decent at the end of the day. Uh, what we'll do is we'll then build our console out just here a little bit. Fantastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and just change this maybe. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start adding our blocks in that we need to add. Um, so first off, what we need is we need obviously a throttle lever. So we'll go ahead and take the throttle lever and place that down if I can find it. Uh, so the throttle lever is going to be just over here. Got it in the right rotation. We'll do one on either side so you can um, so you can control the boat from either side. Um, and then we'll see how that goes from there on forth. Uh, we need to obviously place one down to change gear. And then we also need to place one down to engage the clutch of the engine itself. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do two toggle buttons on the other side. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll put it on a speedo just here, right smack bang in the middle. Actually, if we place one here, it's gonna in, it might interfere. Let's see. Might interfere with this box we already placed down. Uh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh no, it doesn't. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and place that down. Uh, we'll just leave those blocks, and I'll also add just a quick compass ball, just so we know where we're going. At the end of the day. We have an extra block, so we might as well. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and build it up like that. So then it looks a little bit more nicer at the end of the day. Fantastic. So those are the components done. Uh, let me think what else. I think I might just go ahead quickly and angle this and just round it off a little bit. I don't like how square it was looking. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that looks a bit nicer now. Great, so we have all those components down. I mustn't forget about the air. I said that we're going to do two air intakes here in the front. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, just use that. And then what we'll do is we'll just use a couple of fluid ports for our air. You don't have to use this, this many fluid ports. I'm just using six uh, for aesthetic reasons only pretty much. Um, 
So go ahead, just select that. And then you can see here, we need to bring it to there. So what we do is you can actually use all of these. Uh, so you don't have to. I'm just gonna go ahead and just use a corner block, T pieces, and then bring it across and bring it down. One thing to note that uh, I'm not sure if they have fixed this or if it hasn't been fixed, but uh, I did know that exhaust and air in air, sometimes if it was going more than 10 blocks vertically, um, you would have to use a fluid pump to actually bring that air or exhaust out or in. Uh, I think it has been patched, if I'm correct, because in theory you shouldn't have a pump that pushes the air in or the exhaust out, but I could be wrong. Um, don't quote me on that. I guess we're going to find out when we try and start it. Okay, great. So we've got the intake done. Uh, we've got all the components done. One thing that we haven't added yet is the rudders. Now, what we'll do is we'll just use two simple, basic, small rudders, which is just over here. Uh, if I can find them, here we go. It's fin rudders. Now, remember, if we place this down, you can see here positive is going to the right. But because we are on the X-plane, positive is now going to the left on that one. So what we can do to counter that, just go ahead, delete it, select the disable. And now you can see we've placed one there, and we've placed another one there, and they are both going the same direction now. Fantastic, that's great. Perfect, so that pretty much takes care of the components. One thing I will go ahead and add is just a speed sensor. Uh, now, a speed sensor doesn't have to be on the outside. Uh, you can do it on the inside, as I'm going to do right now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and place that down. If I can find it, we're going to look for the linear speed sensor. There we are, perfect. Place that down, click on it. And then what we want it to do is we want it to be a directional. So whichever direction we're going, and it's going to measure that speed itself. A couple things that we need to go ahead quickly and go in here and change on these controls is for the engine in the game at the moment so that you don't starve the engine or don't cut it. I recommend keeping the throttle or WS on a sticky. So we'll go ahead and do that for both the seats. Fantastic. And then we'll do one fast starter motor. Quick note is you can use your control A, C and V so you can quickly go ahead and do that. And we're also going to go ahead and change our starter motor or our starter button to push button instead. Fantastic. Push buttons. Great. That's all taken care of. Uh, what we'll do also is start doing a little bit of logic. So let's go ahead. Actually, you know what? what we'll do is before we do any logic or any painting or any steps further, we'll go ahead, spawn this, and see if it floats. That's probably the most important thing at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, the it looks like it's floating pretty well. Um, yeah, that actually looks great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and do some logic and some painting. Um, I like to do all the logic, all the component building, everything before I do any painting, just because if you spend a long time doing painting and then you have to go ahead and delete those blocks, um, it's just a waste of time. So I like to do all that beforehand. So what we'll go ahead is we'll go ahead and start doing some logic up. Uh, we'll start with the electric. I find the electric a little bit easier to do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just connect the two batteries to themselves so that they are supplying power uh, to each other and that we use them at the same speed. Go ahead and just connect all this up. Fantastic. And there's a little bit more on the side here. Great. So that's all connected up. We'll switch to our data inputs. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Um, so because we're doing controls from either side of the vehicle, well, this is where we need to just work on it a bit. Um, Go ahead, we don't need these throttles because we're using the throttles in the chairs. What we can do instead in those places, we can go ahead and put some dial switches down. Those dial switches can then go ahead and tell us what's happening with the engine, the fuel, the temperature, and the rotations. So we'll go ahead and quickly just name this. This we're going to do speed and we're going to do knots. Fantastic. We'll bring that down to zero because we don't want to know how points we're doing. Uh, on the left, we'll do is temperature. So temp. We'll then do is our fuel. Zero. 
zero. Rotations, the engine. And then last thing we need to add onto that, we have the, so we have temperature already, we have fuel, we have the rotations. What am I missing? Battery charge, there we are. Battery, fantastic. Great. So what we're doing is going back to what I was saying earlier, because we want the controls from either side to control what we're doing. Uh, we need to add all those combinations together. So we're going to either add or all. Uh, so all will be for the red, so for the uh, logic that goes on and off. And then the obviously the and is for the green logic. Um, add, sorry, is for the green logic. So we'll go ahead and place those one, one down for the steering and then one down for the throttle. So we'll go ahead and take our WS from there. WS from there. Add that together. And then we'll do the same for our AD. Great. So that's going to take those two numbers, add them together, and then send them to the engine. Um, it doesn't really matter if it adds it because he's doing a throttle. Um, you could go ahead and do a reset if you wanted to, um, or even a switch to switch the controls between the two. Uh, I'm happy with that, and it sh should work fine for our demonstration that we're doing right now. And then, as we said, that we're going to go ahead. Let's just double check which one that is. So that's going to be WS. So that's going to be the throttle. So that's going to control the throttle of the engines. And then this is going to be the AD, which is going to be left and right, which is going to control the fins themselves. Fantastic. Great. Now we're going to head. We'll just start uh, wiring up all our inputs. So we have two engines. So we have two temperatures. We have um, two fuel tanks. We have two so on and so forth. So we need to add all that together. Uh, so once again, as we'll just add this up. So we need one for the two fuel tanks. We need another one for the two temperature readings. Another one for the rotations, and then the last one is going to be for if I can remember the <laughs> life of me right now. Uh, for the battery, my apologies. So first off, let's do the battery. Go ahead and just connect the two batteries together and then we'll link it up to the battery terminal itself. Next off we need to do is going to be the rotations per second. Let's go ahead, connect the rotations up, add them together and then send them off to the rotation style. Next off is gonna be the temperature. Same as I said earlier, connect them together send them all through to the temperature and then last off is we have the fuel just thought i connected no i connected the fuel tanks to the battery lovely so let's go ahead and delete that connect that there and then i remember the batteries are just over here so we'll go ahead and add that together and then send that through to the battery so that's all hooked up one thing we do need to do is start hooking up our speed sensor now you could hook this directly straight to your um, display that would then display your meters per second we don't want meters we want knots so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and use a function component block function component blocks they have multiple 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 different uses uh, as you can see there's variable variables constants operators trigonometry functions conversions you can type your own equation up there and it's going to work it out for the simple one of doing it here you go down to conversions you see here we can convert meets per second to kilometers meets per second to miles and then meets per second to knots we want not so pretty much what we do is take that equation and then type it up here pretty easy pretty simple 1.943844 fantastic so what it's going to do it's going to take the number from our actual speed sensor there we are. It's going to take it to that input. It's going to convert it or work out its equation, and it's going to spit its equation out into our DAO or into our digital block here. Fantastic. So next one we said is we need one for our clutch. Another one to change the gear. So clutch needs to be activated by default. And then we need to go to our gear. So gear is easy. We just go ahead and connect that straight to the gearboxes. Perfect. While we're here, we can also go ahead and connect our one on either seat to the starter motors. So a good way of doing that is just to go or. So it's going to use the or button if I can find it here. There we are. No. 
all signals. So what the all signal is going to do is going to take pretty much one from both of these chairs and then it's going to send it to the engines. So you can use either engine itself, either seat itself to then control the engine or take signals from both. Very nice, easy and simple. Uh, one thing we also want to do is obviously have our pumps running, um, pumps to run the coolant. So one way we could do that, let's just think about, we'll go ahead and we'll add a separate control here. We'll go ahead and delete those and we'll add a key button, which is a nice little turning key. We'll add that down and we'll use that for our pumps. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we'll say that is going to be coolant pumps. Fantastic. And we'll go ahead and we'll just delete this. Bring down symmetry. I'll make it look a little bit more schnazzier. Fantastic. So we got that done. Um, that's all hooked up. What else? We'll go ahead and just double check everything. So you can see everything is hooked up. Ooh, we haven't gone ahead and connected that. So we'll go ahead and connect our pumps themselves. And you can see here, the last thing I haven't connected is going to be our clutch. So clutch, as I've mentioned in other video, uh, in previous videos, is it needs a value between zero and one, depending on if we want it engaged or disengaged. Um, if incorrect, a numerical value of zero is going to mean the clutch is engaged, which means the gear is disengaged and then vice versa. So if you give a signal one, it's going to disengage the clutch and it's going to let power go through. So what we'll do is for this exact tutorial, I'm going to use, be using a numerical switch box. So we'll go ahead, place this down. Pretty much what this does is you have a numerical input for the off, a numerical input for the on, and then you have one output. So that output is going to go to our two clutches. And then it has a switch. So that switch is then going to go to our clutch button, which as I said, is by default is going to be toggled on so that we want, so when it's on, we want a number of zero going through. So what we'll go ahead and do is we want zero going to on and we want one going to off. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go and get and get two number blocks. And we'll go ahead and just place those down. One of them is going to be one, one of them is going to be zero. And as I just said now, when the clutch is, or the button is on, it needs to have the clutch of a number of zero so that no power is going through. And if I'm correct, that one is the one with zero. Yep. And then that's the one here with one. Yes. And then we can connect that to the off switch. So we disengage the clutch. We then allow power to go through. Fantastic. So that's pretty much everything uh, wired up and hooked up. Uh, one thing we need to do is just go ahead and add our electric just to double check, make sure everything's hooked up. So as you can see here, if we hover over it, you can see what hasn't been connected to the electric. So we'll go ahead and just connect those last blocks. So now everything should be connected. If I go here, yeah, perfect. We can go ahead and close that off, take that away. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll just go ahead and quickly paint this. I'm just going to do a quick paint job. Um, so what we'll do is we'll use a custom color to paint our wood flooring. So we'll go with a, let's go ahead. Oh yeah, this, I don't think I've explained in my own videos. You obviously have a set number of colors here. You can go ahead down here and then you can create your own colors just by using the different dials here. You can choose your color that you want. So um, at the moment, I'm on like the brown. I want that to be like a nice light shade of brown. So let's see if I can do that. So we'll use that brown, I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll go ahead and we'll just paint the deck. So we want that to be a nice wood. You can see I still have symmetry on, so it's painting both sides. Go ahead and just paint the chairs. I don't mind if they're brown. That's fine. Makes them look like leather. You can go a little bit more into detail and you could use uh, paint blocks to make this deck. So you could actually then go ahead and use lines across it, which would actually look really cool. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it will take forever to do uh, in this tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and just use what we have at the moment. I actually am thinking I don't like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. I prefer it just like that. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and delete these blocks themselves and we'll add two little ladder pieces.
and then we'll just make sure we go ahead and paint that fantastic that gives us a little handle to hold on to if need be great so we got that all painted uh, i'll go ahead and just paint the dashboard quickly use a dark gray like that Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and paint that maybe. Yeah, why not? That's perfect. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just give it a nice dark red just for the bottom of the hull itself. So once again, I still have symmetry on, so it should be painting the other side. Let's go ahead straight around the whole boat. And then we'll go ahead and just finish this painting quickly. And then underneath here, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and paint our imports. And then we'll go ahead and just click our plane fill and then click that. And you can see it's just going to paint that whole block underneath, which is great. So that take care, it's take care, takes care of that. <laughs> I don't know if I can catch my words there. Okay, perfect. So what we'll go ahead and do is, uh, that's all the construction, the wiring and piping done. Uh, very basic, very simple. Uh, we'll go ahead and spawn this and see if it works, if it's actually stable and if we need to make any adjustments and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead, spawn that in. Fantastic. So there's our nice looking boat. We'll go ahead and get on it jump on there we go fantastic now if we've done this correctly if we go ahead activate our coolant pumps great go ahead give a little bit of throttle by holding w and then press one and as you can see we have rotations fantastic you can see our exhaust fumes are coming out the back we can go ahead and lower that uh, rpm now perfect uh, no power is going better because we have our clutch engaged. Uh, one thing I actually I'm just thinking about now is what I didn't do is we didn't go ahead and set our gearbox. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead, respawn this back, go ahead quickly and set our gearbox settings. So we want our normal gear to be one to forward and then we want our second gear to be reverse. So we'll go ahead and just change that to minus one. Fantastic. Go ahead, spawn this in. Yeah, some smoke residue from the last one. Go ahead, jump on the boat, jump into the seats. Let's go ahead and activate our cooling pumps. Give it a little throttle, start the engine, and fantastic. Go ahead and lower that rev now. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and disengage our clutch, and then we should be going forward. Fantastic. I'm just going ahead and lower the volume. Great. And you can see we're going forward. What we will need to do is we'll need to add a couple more propellers just to get this boat going a little bit faster. As you can see here now, it's not really going that fast. Um, but we'll let's try out some turns. Use our propeller. That seems to be working perfectly. And then we'll just quickly just test our reverse. So we'll go ahead and activate our clutch. We'll stop, give our gear on, turn the clutch off, and we should be going backwards. Yep, we are. Fantastic. So go ahead, activate the clutch, change the gear again, and we'll just go ahead and go, go to dock again. And we'll just add a couple more propellers on there uh, and then see if we can't get the speed to go up a little faster. Because at the moment we're doing 16 knots, which is abysmal for a speedboat. Um, so we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and just return this back. Uh, and then let's just go ahead and quickly add a couple more pillars. So I'm thinking is we'll go ahead, as you can see, aircraft engine has a power output of 60,000 uh, and the small propellers have a force of 20,000. So that means we should have three propellers per a aircraft engine. At the moment we only have one. So what we want to do is we'll go ahead and we're going to just go ahead and delete these blocks here, delete these blocks here. And you can see here now, so once we have all these blocks deleted, all our propellers, we can actually go ahead and now I think we can join all these up together. So if we go ahead here, delete all these, change the color, and we'll use T pipes.
and we'll angle it all down and then we'll go ahead choose red again choose our propellers and then now we have six propellers so we're using the maximum force that we can for this engine itself so let's go ahead spawn this back in and see if it all works uh, once again just double check to make sure everything's connected perfect and then we'll go ahead and spawn this in and see if we've managed to get it to go a little bit quicker uh, that has added a little bit more weight just by the way just so anyone that's wondering if you have hundreds of little propellers we'll add weight so we'll go ahead activate the coolant pumps give a little throttle engage the engine lower the revs and fits uh, our rotations go ahead and disable the clutch and then we'll give it full throttle Seems like we're out of full. Still going pretty slow. Um, I'm not too sure. That might be something to do with the gearbox itself. Uh, let's just go ahead and see if we can see this. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's spinning fully. Uh, but not to worry. That's the whole fun and joy about the building your own creations. Is you get to go ahead and actually do some diagnosing. Um, I'm not too sure why it's doing that. Um, but that's probably a good place to stop for this video. And um, We'll go ahead and cut it and kill the engine for now and we'll pick up in the next video uh, from where we left off today and then we'll start trying to diagnose the engine and see how we can obtain a better speed uh, because we should be getting a better speed from the engine itself. Uh, we've got two aircraft engines, a couple of propellers, we should be getting a better speed. Um, but we'll wrap it up for today uh, and leave it at that. And as always, guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed the video and you found it somewhat informative. Sorry for it being so long today. Um, there was a lot of things to cover. Um, don't forget, please, to hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Uh, and if you guys ever need anything, any help, come out and check out the Discord community for Stormworks. Uh, I'm on there myself. Everyone's on there. We're always willing to help out and give you advice or answer any questions you might have. Uh, and then I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.